Claude 3.7 Sonnet has just been released and it is insane. In this video, I will break down what makes it so special, how it stacks up against models like GPT-01 and 03 Mini, or even the new Grok 3 release, and what use cases I'm gonna use it for compared to other models. And if you stick around, I'll show you if this tool can program a whole web game with just one prompt. Let's get right to it. Claude 3.7 Sonnet was just released today and I will show you exactly what you need to know. First of all, Claude 3.7 Sonnet is available for the free version on Claude. So you can go to Claude dot com and try it out right now by just clicking on try Claude. If you don't already have an account, just log in with Google and you are good to go. The second thing that you need to know is that Claude 3.7 Sonnet is the next model after Claude 3.5 Sonnet. You might be wondering why not 3.6 Sonnet? That is because they renamed the second 3.5 model 3.5 new and that is technically the 3.6 model. What makes Claude 3.7 Sonnet so special is that it has a hybrid reasoning model. This is Anthropic's answer to ChatGPT and DeepSeek and Grok's thinking mode. You can see here, you can select on the extended thinking and it will take a little bit longer and take more compute in order to answer questions for you. On top of that, it has been trained on state-of-the-art coding and is the best coding model right now. And it allows you for a 200,000 context window. If you are using this via the API, it will cost you $3 per million token inputs and $15 per million token output. And it allows you to do prompt caching, which saves you up to 90% cost savings in certain situations. The main use cases for this is really with coding. Even Cursor says that this is the default for their software in order to create code, just because it is the best coding tool out there. If we go to the benchmarks, we can see that it excels in many of these different use cases. However, if you click on the agentic coding section, it is by far the best model out there with none of the other model coming anywhere close to it. If you compare the other benchmarks, we can see that the graduate level reasoning level is on par with some of the other models such as Grok 3 Beta or OpenAI 03 Mini Output. These are all very close to each other. If you click on agentic tool use, which is a topic that I cover here on this channel, so subscribe for more videos that use agentic code and use Sonnet in their applications, you can see that it is also the best tool out there with 81% for retail use or 58% for airline use compared to 50 and 70%. So that is a huge improvement. Just those 10% make a big difference. You can check out the other benchmarks yourself, but I wanted to dive into an example with this. So here's how I would use it in different scenarios. If I were to write a blog post and I use the regular reasoning model, then I write, write a blog post about how AI can help your sales process. And I click enter. I click enter and it is giving me a blog post here. If I use the same prompt and I select the reasoning model, let's see what it gives us this time. This time it takes a little bit longer. You can see here in the upper right corner that it is thinking about how it's generating it. And it gives you the reasoning of what it's gonna do. It says, I've been asked to write a blog post and it tells you how it's gonna structure the blog post. On the right side, you can see how it wrote the blog post and it did a great job of outlining the different sections, making it engaging, keeping the, the sentences short and concise, and even giving you a conclusion without writing in conclusion. So now let's compare these side by side. On the right side, you can see the blog post that was generated with the deep thinking. On the left side, you can see the blog post that was generated with the normal thinking mode. They are very similar, but let's use Claude itself in order to see which blog post is more compelling. I gave Claude 3.7 Sonnet extended the following prompt. I will give you two blog posts about how AI can help with sales, and then I'm asking it, tell me which blog post is better and why. And then I give it the two blog posts. Let's see what it says. So again, on the right side here, you can see that it's thinking and it is reasoning and probably comparing these two blog posts. We can see the thought process right here and it is comparing them. It is evaluating them based on several factors and then it is analyzing each blog post independently. And Claude is biased towards its own model, it seems, because it is saying that blog post two is superior because it has more depth and comprehensiveness. It provides more uh, thorough explanation of each AI application and goes beyond just listing capabilities. If you want to use this for creative purposes, for outlining blog posts or writing content, then I would say use the deep reasoning part of Claude 3.7 Sonnet. And now to the fun part, and that is the coding abilities. Let's start a new chat and let's see if we can create a really detailed HTML, JavaScript and CSS game that we can play in our browser right away. And we'll try it to do it with just one prompt. The code that we're gonna use uh, is 
create a tower defense strategy game that I can play in an HTML viewer. So it should be a file containing HTML, JavaScript, CSS, and it should be a complete tower defense game with multiple enemies, types, tower upgrades, paths, and wave management. I'm gonna select the extended 3.7 extended model and I'm gonna hit enter. First, it's gonna be reasoning on the right side. Here we can see how it is gonna create this. It's gonna create multiple enemy types, tower upgrade paths, waves management, fast forward button. And then here are the different steps of how it will create this game. So let's see if this actually works. And to make it a fair comparison, let's do the same with Chad 4.0 Mini and with Grok Reasoning. So see here, Grok is thinking and ChatGPT is still reasoning and going through all of the different steps while Claude has already thought about it in three seconds and it is coding. And ChatGPT was the first one to finish this while uh, Grok is still thinking. Now after almost uh, 160 seconds, it has, uh, it has started coding. Well, ChatGPT was the fastest and Clove was the fastest at reasoning, but it was the slowest at coding, although it just finished it. So, um, and it gives me the HTML viewer in order to start the game right here. So this is perfect. Let's play all of these three games. So let's play this and see uh, how it works. So the instructions I gave it is to play this in an HTML editor. So let's do that. And I'm gonna insert it. I see that I have a tutorial here and I can just start the game. Let's do it. I see a path. I see little spots where the tower can go. I have a laser tower. So if I click on it and click on this, that's where it places the tower. I have a certain amount of money and I can start the wave. We can see the little uh, boxes here and it's shooting them. This is really impressive. And as you can see here, we also have the tower details where we see um, the upgrade paths and the type of damage and stats that each tower has. I see that I already finished the first wave and I have $170. So let's try the missile tower and see how this does. All right, so this uh, seems to have a, a splash. Let's click on it. And we can see here that it has a splash of 50. All right, this is really cool. And lastly, I wanted to check if we can upgrade these. So here, for example, if we want to increase 40% firing rate for $100, let's click on that. And we see that it has just upgraded the firing rate here. Lastly, in, in order to generate this level of detail in a simple file, check out this code. This is uh, almost 2,200 lines of code, which if we translate it is 5,800 words or 77,000 characters. Most LLMs don't give you an output window that large. And that is actually one of the really strong suits of this new Anthropic 3.7 model, that it gives you huge files that are all co coherent and make sense and are logical. But let's be fair and compare this to other models. So let's go over to ChatGPT and paste this in, see if this gives us anything good. We do see a cool game here. Uh, I don't know how to place towers. Uh, maybe click on the yellow thing. Yeah, this gives the towers. Let's start the wave. I don't really see money. I can just place towers everywhere. So overall, the game logic is not there. Um, is it impressive? 100%. I mean, this is, uh, like I mentioned earlier, this is only 309 lines of code. Um, so it, being able to get that logic and the design in that few lines of code is really cool, but it doesn't give you a full game experience. And lastly, let's see if Grok came up with something good. Let's click on copy here and press enter. Um, I don't see a graphic, so maybe this is a different, this is it. Okay, I have a graphic here. So this is also around the same amount of code here as what ChatGPT gave us. So in this code editor, we see this here. Let's open this in full screen. All right, so if I click on the mage tower and click here, it places it and then I can start the wave. I can fast forward it, go back to normal speed, but it is not attacking the uh, enemies, okay. So um, yeah, overall this game experience is not really there and it's not a complete game. So this brings us back to 3.7 Sonnet being the king of this particular exercise and completely dominating the other AIs. If you wanna see how to use Grok properly, you will like this video and subscribe to this channel if you wanna learn how to use AI to build your business and be more productive.